It's, we're all connected. We're all one. We're all a part of this human spiritual experience that we call life and that we support each other in what it is that we are seeking to do and grow and gain and, and all of the joy and goodness that comes out of our experience. And really it comes down to our own personal connection with the divine, our own spiritual relationship with God, with ourself, and the fact that we are grounded in spirit in every moment and every experience of our life. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine in Coeur d'Alene. I was lamenting, this is when I was over there last weekend, and I, and I was kind of lamenting a little bit, um, you know, about, about myself and, and kind of my nature. Because I was thinking about people who, you know, there, there are people who are able to just do something over and over again. They have this sense of concentration. And that they can do something and they can do it over and over again. They become so good at it that they're able to be very successful at, at that. They're able to create all this financial success and so on and so forth. And athletes are like that. You know, athletes, um, in order to be a good athlete, you have to do something over and over and over. It's almost mind-numbing. Over and over. And the goal of an athlete is, is perfection, but they know they'll never achieve it. It's like, it's like, it's to do this one thing perfectly, and so they do it, and that's what makes a good athlete. It takes a tremendous sense of concentration and a willingness to be present, and I'm, I just, that's not me. <laughs> that's not who I am to do that over and over again. So I was kind of lamenting, you know, it's like, why can't I just settle down? Why can't I just be satisfied? You know, why can't I just kind of just stay present? Why do I have to keep going over here, doing that? And this person says to me, he says, well, I said, that's just who you are. Well, and that's, and that's, I think that's part of our experience. You know, if my wife were to describe me in astrological terms, because <laughs> she loves astrology, of course, she, she would say that I'm a five planet Aries with a moon in Scorpio and a Leo ascendant who has 70% of their planets as fire and no earth. <laughs> and, and I would say that I am a perfect five planet Aries with a moon in Scorpio and a Leo ascendant <laughs> who has 70% of their planets in fi as fire and no earth. And so I am perfect in that context. Do you hear that? When we figure out who we are, and we quit trying to be something else because that's how it shows up for us. You know, and that's one of the things I like about you know, some of these um, kind of odd things like astrology is really good for that because it says, okay, you can look at something and it may not be like the truth, but it is, it, it, it's, it's a context for us to look at it and ask questions about what is the truth. And so it explains things. And explains why there's this divine discontent. You know, because how can you be all fire and sit and concentrate? You can't do it. You know, when I write a Sunday lesson, I'm up and down and up and down and, you know, over here and doing that, you know, and doing my email and going back. And, you know, I just, it's like I have to keep moving. And that's okay. You see? So whatever we are is okay. And so once we, once we accept that, I'm not going to change those, those dynamics. So why try? Why not just be the best that I can be in the context of those things? And all of a sudden that divine discontent settles and becomes less about discontent and more about just being who I am. And then becomes less about struggling against that process. I think the truth is that each one of us, each, each of you is absolutely perfect as you are. Absolutely. And your only job is to understand who you are and to accept yourself as a divine being here to most perfectly express the presence of God in your life and in the world. And the rest will take care of itself. My poem today is Perfecting Our Imperfections. The imperfect is perfect. Dysfunctionally functional, beauty in its imperfection, always perfect in its creation. Even if it is not so, God doesn't create imperfection. Because the divine can't imagine it, all creation is perfect, created for a purpose. 
imbued with what is necessary to fulfill its reason for being. That is the truth. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.